pretty much nobody asked me about China, which is indicative of the positioning. My, my sense is people just aren't really long China. And those two things entered the top 10 yesterday because when the NASDAQ was down, what you do is buy KWeb. You don't buy Qs. Definitely wasn't uh, too much of an area of focus. There's so many things to look at and our process incorporates it. So, you know, everybody's got baggage and gets fed the bullshit from Wall Street. That is number one. Number yeah. one in the top three things. Like, this is awesome. Well, I'll get on when the markets reopened, which is what happened last <laughs> night uh, with uh, Hong Kong. But mainland is still closed. It won't open until Sunday night, Eastern time. At this point, I think, you know, investors are already modeling it in some kind of sharp recovery in China. Um, it's actually Keith, increasingly hard for me to find uh, long ideas, new long ideas um, in my coverage space, given the, the incredible surge that we've seen. Well, on that, it's, it's the same, you know, the process works both ways, as you know, Felix. You know, so when I say, like how many times in the last year, for that matter, when we were bearish on China for the prior two years, it was a long time, it was a great, macro short position to stay with for the full cycle all the way down to the worst or the lowest part of the sign curve you're going to see in China sensibly when they shut the whole bloody country down uh, and the worst economic data we've seen on the sign curve. So it's like a classic uh, and textbook execution of the process there because we stayed with it. Right. Uh, but on the short side, whether, you know, I'll always say, you know, it, just because the stock's been cut in half doesn't mean it can't get cut in half again. In as much as this, if a stock goes up 20 to 50 percent, it can't double again. That's what a bull market is. I mean, China, so I wouldn't be, you know, I know how you roll, but I mean, it's it's not, I know you're not afraid to pick longs, but you're just saying the move's been so big. You're wait, you're essentially waiting for, I mean, if you get a, any correction in Chinese stocks, which we had a mild one, that's why I got to buy K-Web and add to EWH Hong Kong, because everybody should know, um, which was up 2.4% last night. The under ownership, and I don't know if you heard my point with Steiner. Like nobody at Hedge Eye Regional was asking me about China. Like, why not? I mean, you should be asking me about new positions that used to be short positions. I mean, institutional interest in China is still pretty much all time lows. Maybe a little bit of pickup here and there, but there's still a lot of skepticism. Um, so, and there's a lot of shorts still in the market. So, Keith, we could have you know more short covering. It's already been hurting all the shorts in China. Hey there, Hedgeye Nation, or if you're not part of Hedgeye Nation, thanks for watching Hedgeye on YouTube. If you haven't already, make sure to click on the button below there. Subscribe to our YouTube page. You can also follow the link in the description to our website to get even more great investing content.